Hi everyone, this lesson is on the side effects of metoprolol. Before we talk about those side effects, let's talk about what metoprolol is. So metoprolol is also known as low pressor. It is a medication used to reduce blood pressure and heart rate. And in doing so, it's used to treat hypertension, which is high blood pressure, anginal chest pain, congestive heart failure, and acute myocardial infarction. Now, metoprolol is a beta blocker, and this means that it blocks beta adrenergic receptors, and more specifically, it blocks cardiac beta-1 receptors, so beta-1 receptors in the heart. And it has very little activity on beta-2 receptors, so it's going to be more specific for cardiac beta-1 receptors. And by blocking this beta-1 receptor, it actually prevents catecholamines from binding to the receptor. So catecholamines are going to include norepinephrine and epinephrine. So norepinephrine and epinephrine by binding to beta-1 receptors increases heart rate. So by blocking this receptor, metoprolol and other beta blockers can reduce the heart rate. So it's blocking the effect of those catecholamines. And it also reduces renin release. And both of these effects can also lead to a reduction in blood pressure. So because of this mechanism as to how metoprolol and other beta blockers works, it can also cause mild and or severe side effects. So let's talk about what those side effects are. So some of the most common side effects are going to include bradycardia. So bradycardia is going to be a low heart rate. And bradycardia more specifically means a heart rate less than 60 beats per minute. And as I mentioned before, it's one of the more common side effects affecting up to 9% of users. And it is due to excessive reduction of heart rate because metoprolol and other beta blockers reduces heart rate. If you're taking too much or too high of a dose, you can reduce your heart rate too much. So if you bring it down below 60 beats per minute, then you'd have bradycardia. And this can cause some other side effects, which we're going to mention as we go through this lesson. We can also see issues with hypotension. So because we mentioned before that metoprolol brings down blood pressure, we can have hypotension or a low blood pressure. So this is again going to be due to too high of a dose. If you have too much metoprolol, then you can bring down your blood pressure too much, causing hypotension. Generally speaking, this is going to occur in roughly 1% of patients. And it can contribute to other side effects like dizziness we're going to talk about here in a moment. So dizziness is the next side effect we'll talk about. So this is going to be presyncope, so feeling lightheaded. Possibly syncope in some cases, meaning that a patient may faint if they have very significant dizziness or very low blood pressures. And again, this is going to be due to reductions in the blood pressure, as I mentioned before. And dizziness can be more likely to occur, generally speaking, roughly 10% of patients may be affected by dizziness. We can also see issues with headaches as well. So this too is one of the more common side effects of metoprolol, and roughly 10% of patients are affected by a headache. Fatigue and tiredness are also other important side effects. So feeling very tired, this is also estimated to affect 10% of patients. And again, it's one of the more common side effects, and it's going to be due to a host of things we've just talked about, the bradycardia and the hypotension. So if you have too low of a heart rate, too low of a blood pressure, you're not going to get enough blood to some of the parts of your central nervous system, like your brain and some other parts of your body. And this can cause patients to feel very fatigued and tired. We can also see issues with depression in patients who use metoprolol as well and other beta blockers. So this is going to be depression-like symptoms. So these include low mood, low energy, and irritability. And up to 5% of patients are affected with depression. Diarrhea can also occur in metoprolol patients. So loose stool and higher frequency of bowel movements can be common. This can occur in roughly 5% of patients as well. And in some patients, it may have constipation, although this is going to be more rare. Roughly 1% of patients will have constipation. And we can also see issues with nausea as well. So feeling mildly nauseous, this can also occur in approximately 1% of patients. And then metoprolol can cause some other gastrointestinal issues as well, including heartburn. So this would be gastroesophageal reflux or acid reflux. And this occurs in approximately 1% of patients as well. And then there are other gastrointestinal symptoms, including dyspepsia, flatulence, and xerostomia or dry mouth. All of these can roughly occur in 1% of patients. Now, we can also see issues with heart failure by taking metoprolol and beta blockers. Now, metoprolol and other beta blockers can be used as a treatment for heart failure in some cases, but in other cases, depending on the patient, metoprolol or other beta blockers can exacerbate or worsen symptoms of an underlying heart failure. So it's best to check to see if there's worsening symptoms of heart failure in patients who've just been started on a beta blocker like metoprolol. And again, this is going to be rare. It's going to occur in 1% of patients. 
but again, it's something to look out for. So it's important to assess for congestive heart failure symptoms. And then we can also see issues with respiratory symptoms in some patients. So dyspnea, this is shortness of breath, can occur in 3% of patients, and wheezing and bronchospasm can occur in 1% of patients. Now, metoprolol and other beta blockers can cause issues with the skin, and one of them is going to be pruritus. So pruritus is feeling itchy. This can be a generalized itching. It can occur in many different parts of the body, and it can occur in 5% of patients. And a skin rash can also occur. So this can be, again, generalized. It can occur in different parts of the body, and this also affects up to 5% of patients as well. And then we can also see issues with cold extremities. So extremities are going to be your hands and your feet or your distal parts of your limbs. So hands and feet can have cold intolerance and or feel colder. This is going to occur in 1% of patients, and metoprolol and other beta blockers may exacerbate an underlying Raynaud's. Now, the reason that this can occur is because if there is any issue with bradycardia or hypotension, there may not be enough blood flow or reduced blood flow to the extremities. All of these can lead to cold extremities. And we can also see other side effects as well. These include sexual dysfunction, including decreased libido and erectile dysfunction, exercise intolerance, tinnitus or tinnitus, so that's a ringing in the ears, and there can be issues with glucose metabolism in patients who take metoprolol. These include hyperglycemia, or high levels of glucose in the blood, and worsened or prolonged symptoms of hypoglycemia, or low blood glucose levels in the blood. So metoprolol may tend to cause hyperglycemia, or higher blood glucose levels. But if there are some other factors that cause the patient to have a low blood glucose level and they have associated symptoms of that, the metoprolol itself can actually worsen or prolong the symptoms of the low blood glucose. So those are other important side effects we want to think about when taking metoprolol. So if you want to learn about drug interactions with metoprolol and what to avoid if you are taking metoprolol, please check out my lesson on what to avoid when taking metoprolol. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks much for watching and I hope to see you next time.